What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect SQL Server databases in Python on a Chromebook. As a bonus, these instructions will also work on a standard Debian Linux install. I'll also provide these instructions and source code in a blog post. Check the description for the link. Before I begin, I'm going to talk about some prerequisites you need. This is not a beginner's guide to Python or SQL. This video is meant for people who already know how to code in Python and access SQL servers, but have a Chromebook and want to also code on it. On your Chromebook, you need to install Linux. Once Linux is installed, you need to install Visual Studio Code. Finally, you also need to set up Visual Studio Code for Python. An optional program you may want to install is dBeaver. It's a database management tool that helps you access and administer your databases. I have videos showing you how to set up and install all of these prerequisites, so check the description for the links. This video also assumes you have access to a SQL Server database, so make sure you have your credentials handy for SQL Server. So let's begin. We cannot go ahead and start coding right away though. We need to configure Linux and Python to be able to connect to SQL Server. We also need to know what version of Debian is installed on your Chromebook. To find out which Debian version you have, open a terminal and type cat space forward slash etc forward slash star release. For me, you can see that Debian version 10 is installed. Take note of what version is installed for you. You will need it later. Now let's install the SQL Server driver onto Linux. To download the driver, we need to visit a link in Microsoft's website. The link is really long, so I'll provide it in the description for you to copy and paste. I'll open up a browser and paste the link. When the page loads up, scroll down and click on the Debian link. We will see a list of commands. We need to copy and paste these commands individually onto a terminal window to install the driver. So I'll copy and paste the commands one by one. Once you get to this section, you have to copy the command for the version of Debian installed on your Chromebook. Mine is version 10, so I'll copy that command. If you have one of the other versions, then copy and paste the appropriate command for your install. Then I'll continue copying and pasting the rest of the commands. So all the commands have been run and we have the SQL Server driver installed. It's time to install the Python Py ODBC package. Do that by typing sudo space dash capital H pip3 install Py ODBC. Mine is already installed, but if you don't already have Py ODBC installed, then you will see an installation progress. When the package is finished installing, we can now start some coding. Open up Visual Studio Code. Let's create a folder where our project would be located in. Click File, Open Folder. Here, navigate to a location you want to save your project in. When you find a location, click on the new folder icon. Name the new folder SQL Server with all lower cases. Then click OK at the bottom. Next step is to create a Python file. Go to the top left and click on the new file icon. Name the file sqlserver.py, also all lowercase. Before we start coding, let's look at the database I'm going to connect to. I'll open up the dbeaver program and then open up the database I'm going to access. Here are a list of tables in the database. We'll use Python to access this database and list these tables. We will also add a new table, add data to that new table, and delete data from it. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code and start coding. Start by importing the PyODBC package by typing import PyODBC. Next, we need to set up some variables that will help us connect to the database. Let's declare a variable for the server we want to connect to. The IP address you see here is my personal server. Replace that IP with a server you have access to. 
For the database variable, I'm setting it to the name of the database I want to access. I'm creating a username variable for my username in the SQL server and a password variable for my password. You need to change the values of these variables to what your server needs. Now let's add code that creates a connection to the SQL server. Take a look at this line. This is the required connection string that identifies the SQL server driver Python is going to use. I also included the variables I created for my server connection. We have the create connection code done. Next, let me show you how to run a select query. This current code here will run the select query. We also want to display the results. I'll add code that does that. I'm done with the code, so I'll run it. To do that, click on run, then run without debugging. Any results will show up on the bottom of the screen, but I get an error. Looks like I forgot to type the entire driver name. I'll fix that on line 9. And I'll run the Python code again. I get another error. Hmm, what's wrong? Oh, I see. The end of line 10 needs an open and close parentheses. I'll run the code again. And it works. If you look towards the bottom, you can see the list of tables in my database. Now, if I look at the dBeaver program, you can see the exact same tables. Time to add some code that will create a new table. I'll add this new code before the previous code that displays all my tables. So basically what this code does is execute the create table query and puts the amount of results affected into a count variable. The table that is going to be created is called guitars with fields called guitar ID, name and manufacturer. Finally, the query results are committed on the next line. After that, the previous code we created will list all the tables in the database and the results should now include a guitars table. I'll run the Python code. And on the results, you can see a new table called Guitars. If I go to dBeaver and refresh the view, the Guitar table appears. When opening the table, you can see the same fields I created. The next query I'm going to demonstrate is an insert query. This query inserts data into a table, in this case, the Guitars table. So I'll comment out all the select and create table code. We do not need it anymore. And start writing out the new code. So the Python code for creating a table and inserting data into a table is basically the same. The only difference is the SQL query command written in the execute Python method. I also added a line to print out how many rows were affected so I can get some confirmation that the code was successful. I run the code and it works. 
I see the confirmation here telling me one row was inserted. And if I open up the Beaver and refresh the table, I can see the data that was inserted. Now I'm going to show you how to use an update query. I'm going to use it to correct the guitar manufacturer in the data I inserted. The manufacturer should be Gibson, not Fender. So let's go back to Visual Studio. I'll comment out the insert code because we don't want to insert another table. And write out the update code. It's also the same. Just change the SQL statement. I also have to get the ID of the row I want to update. I'll check it in dBeaver. I need to update guitar ID 1. And for print, make sure it says rows updated instead of rows inserted. Oops, I misspelled set. I run the code now and I get an error. Oh, I misspelled manufacturer. I'll fix it. And run the code again. And it works. If I go back to dBeaver and refresh the table, the manufacturer will be changed to Gibson. Finally, let me show you a delete query. And like the previous query, all we have to do is modify the SQL statement in the Python code. I'll comment out the previous code because I don't want to update the guitars table anymore. And actually, I can just copy and paste the previous code. I'll change the update query to a delete query. Then change rows updated to rows deleted. Then I'll run the code. And it was successful. Let's confirm by going to dBeaver, refresh the table, and the entry is now gone. So that's it. You now have the knowledge of accessing a SQL Server database using Python on a Chromebook. Let me know in the comments on how you would use this. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.